my fellow Gorehounds, welcome to the Horror Party. I'm Mike Conway, and today, because of the release of the first Omen, we're going to go back and revisit The Omen, released in 2006. The Omen follows diplomat Robert Thorne and his wife Catherine. After Catherine unknowingly gives birth to a stillborn child, Robert is approached by a priest to take a newborn from a mother who had just died. As the years go by, grisly and mysterious deaths begin to surround their child Damien. Robert is then approached by a priest who claims his son is the Antichrist and must be killed. Now with the help of a photographer... Wait. Ah, shit. I'm sorry, guys. I was reading the summary of the first First Omen. Let's do this again. The Omen follows diplomat Robert Thorne and his wife Catherine. After Catherine unknowingly gives birth to a stillborn child, Robert is approached by a priest to take a newborn from a mother who had just died. As the years go by, grisly and mysterious deaths begin to surround their child Damien. Robert is then approached by a priest who claims his son is the Antichrist and must be killed. Now, with the help of a photographer, Robert tries to see if his boy really is the son of the devil and how he can be stopped. So what type of party is The Omen? Well, according to this scale, it looks like this movie is best enjoyed with friends and a little bit of the devil weed. And as always, I'm gonna show you how to make a drink to tie along with the movie. So let's hop behind the bar and let's get right to it. As with any game, there are some basic rules you can follow or modify. For today's game, take a drink when Leave Shriver doesn't mumble his lines. Every time Thorn is mentioned. Every time Damien is mentioned. When a priest appears. Every time an actor from Harry Potter appears. And finally, with any kill. If alcohol isn't your bag, there are plenty of other things to choose from. Cannabis is legal in your state. Delta 8, 9, 10, or whatever the hell number they're at now. Caffeine, hot sauce, anything. Just know your tolerance. This is supposed to be fun. We don't want to send you to the hospital. Basically, don't be a dumbass. Here, read this disclaimer if that helps. So is The Omen a worthy entry into the franchise, or did someone take the same how to remake a horror movie like Gus Van Zandt? Regardless, let's break down this film and find out exactly why I say this is a party movie. The movie opens with a priest checking out the stars in the Vatican Observatory. And go ahead and take a drink because this priest is none other than the High Master of Durmstrang himself, Igor Karkaroff. What exactly is he looking at? Well, I'll get to that in just a bit. We then cut to Robert Thorne, played by Lee Shiver. He is rushing to the hospital after finding out his wife is giving birth. Kate's gone into labor and apparently there are complications. After learning his newborn baby died during delivery, he is offered option B. Do a little switcheroo with another newborn whose mother had just died. But it's totally cool because she does not know. Robert agrees to it and they name him Damien. Rectus Dominus. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Several years pass and as we see little Damien grow, the married couple remains looking the exact same even keeping the same hairstyles. You know what? I'm gonna call bullshit. I had a lovely full head of hair before my son was born. Now look at me. After a freak accident causes the death of an ambassador, the wild thorns move to London and into a big house. How big is it? It's big. Big. Bad big. 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 It is big. Totally, and it smells like fart. Fast forward another few years and Robert's career is on the upswing as the youngest U.S. ambassador. Which sounds all fancy until you realize it comes with a little side of supernatural chaos and even more bizarre death. Anarchy in the UK, am I right? Following the death of Damien's nanny at his birthday party, Robert is approached by Father Brennan who claims to know the truth about Damien's origins. Meanwhile, photographer Keith Jennings, played by the fantastic David Thewis, starts snapping photos that predict how folks will die. The stay-at-home mom with no other job, Catherine, decides they need another nanny to replace the dead one. Enter Mrs. Baylock, played by Mia Farrow, who knows a thing or two about the spawns of Satan. 
She is very protective over Damien by making decisions left and right without consulting the Thorns, and even brings in the sweet little puppy home as an extra protection. I mean, look at the sweet little guy. After Robert begins to believe something isn't right with Damien, he pays a visit to Father Brennan, who tells him the boy is the Antichrist and must die. This sends Robert and Jennings on a quest to find the truth, where they meet up with Voldemort and Dumbledore, who tell them how to kill the boy. Will this wild thorn bury his son and rid the evil once and for all? Well... Okay, so you know exactly how this is going to play out if you've seen the original Richard Donner classic. Look, I'm not against remakes, not at all. Just as long as you bring something new and fresh to the table. When the teaser for this film dropped in 2006, I gotta be honest, I thought it was pretty badass we were getting another Omen movie released on 666. But as more trailers came out, I became less interested and ultimately forgot about it. Until fairly recently with the new one coming out. If you were like me watching this for the first time, you probably said to yourself, wait, I've seen this before, and you wouldn't be wrong. While it's not a complete shot-for-shot -shot remake like Psycho, it's almost word-for-word. Word. In fact, screenwriter Dan McDermott was denied any screenwriting credit since it was too close to the original. Instead, original screenwriter David Seltzer got sole credit. However, instead of opening like the original, this opens with a priest seeing three comets, which signals Armageddon. Top that off with actual footage of the world today, and boom, that makes it different, right? But for real, don't copy and paste something and sprinkle a few random lines and scenes here and there and call it an original screenplay. That shit's lazy. And I'm looking at you, live action Disney remakes. You go over what he draws with a pen, all right? That's Tracy. However, there are some positives here, and that's the kills. So get your drink ready and let's play a game called Who Did It Better? The first one is probably the most iconic scene in the original. Only here, it looks like it's taking place at Billy Madison's kindergarten graduation. After Damien's nanny has a staring match with this good boy, she heads up to the house's roof, which conveniently has steps already in place at the ledge. How about that? She gets everyone's attention, hilariously including these puppets, and shouts out the famous line, It's all for you! Yeah, this is pretty much shot for shot, but it doesn't mean it's less effective. What helped make it so chilling in the first one was how realistic it looked with no music cues as she was taking the jump. It's the same thing here, with a little extra brutality added. And hey, afterwards we get a little cameo from the original Damien himself. I call this one a tie. Next up on the list is Father Brennan. After Catherine suspects something isn't right with the boy, Robert meets up with the overly anxious priest. He tells Robert he must kill the boy, but first has to go up to meet with a man called Bugenhagen to show him how it's done. Robert brushes this off and sends the frantic priest on his way. Now it wouldn't be a proper horror movie without a dramatic storm scene, would it? Brennan, caught in a torrential downpour, seeks refuge in a church. Unfortunately for him, it seems like the big guy upstairs has other plans. A bolt of lightning strikes and before you can say, here's the church, here's the steeple, a steel rod impales Brennan. This scene is wonderfully shot. Much like the rest of the film, the main thing missing is the iconic score from Jerry Goldsmith. That being said, the remake wins the kill here. Next up is Catherine. The setup to her death is all the same, with Damien knocking her over a ledge inside the house. Now, I may get some gasps here, but I prefer Julia Stiles' take over Lee Remick's portrayal, especially in this scene. I mean, shit, she's even doing her own stunt work here. But I digress. Unlike the previous kills, this one is completely different. In this one, Mrs. Baylock visits Catherine in the hospital. At first, she seems comforting until she pulls out a syringe and gives her about 10 cc's she hates about you. You know what? What the hell is up with hospitals and horror movies? Where are the fucking nurses when the call alarm is going off? You know what? Let's ask a professional to see if this death is medically accurate in a new segment I like to call What the Hell is Up with Hospitals and Horror Movies? Hmm. While it could be a little hazardous, the amount of air that she put in the IV would not be fatal. An air bubble in excess of 150 cc would be the closest to cause an embolism. What the hell is up with hospitals and horror movies? Even though Catherine's death is goofy as fuck in the original, Mrs. Baylock is so menacing that I have no choice to give it to the 1976 film here. Next is Keith Jennings. As I said before, Keith's photography has predicted the previous death. Unfortunately for him, he falls under that category. After Keith and Robert's bogus journey to visit Bugenhagen, Robert declares he will not take his son's life. Keith says screw that noise and he'll do it himself. After he walks away, we get a pretty great cameo from Death of Final Destination. 
In both films, they get decapitated in pretty gnarly ways, but in this one, it's more brutal instead of the head of a dummy flying through the window. The remake wins here. Like the original, the setup is the same for Mrs. Baylock. Robert returns home, grabs a pair of scissors, and heads upstairs to a sleeping Damien. He finds the number of the beast under his hair, which leads Mrs. Baylock interfering. After a brief scuffle and a swift kick to the face, Robert takes a screaming Damien out of the house and throws him in the car. Baylock then returns mad as hell with a random sledgehammer that just suddenly appeared. Robert then puts the pedal to the metal and sends Baylock to meet her master. The original wasn't so climactic as this but that doesn't mean it was worse. Instead, it takes place entirely in the house, but the struggle is more intense and shot so damn well. Plus, we get that wonderful goldsmith score. OG for the win. Which finally brings us to the end with the death of Robert. Mr. Thorne has had enough of this shit and rushes Damien to the church to sacrifice his boy. Just before he strikes down on the pleading Damien, the police show up and shoot Robert dead. Both are pretty identical here, so really this is all up to who performed it better. Lee Schreiber is a great actor, but for some reason he felt emotionless the entire film up until this point when we finally get something from him. The same goes for Damien. Look, I can't knock a kid's acting, but the remake's Damien looks like they went out of their way to make the child look as evil as shit from the beginning. The original still had that boyish innocence to him that made you feel Robert's pain when he chose to sacrifice his son. I'm gonna say the original wins here. And with a score of three to two and one tie, the 1976 film wins overall. And that's it. So The Omen was released in 2006 and was heavily promoted as being released on June 6, 2006. You know, 666? I get it. It did well financially, but it was heavily critically panned. It's not a terrible movie per se, but in the end, the remake is like a B movie that you stumble upon late at night hoping for some scares, but you get some genuine laughs instead. Alright, so it's not exactly Oscar worthy material here, but Hey, if you're in the mood for some devilishly can't be fun, you, you know, it just might hit the spot. Just don't expect it to outshine the original. It's more like a doomed photocopy of a masterpiece. What movies would you like us to cover in the future? Let us know in the comments and we will see you on the next one.